can't believe that happened at work. But enough about that. So what about your reunion tonight? Are you going to go? Oh, I don't know. The whole endeavor just seems so pointless. Then you should totally go. <laughs> Rachel, I haven't seen these people in like 20 years. Yeah, when I went to my reunion, it was great. The hot guys were all fat and bald. The popular girls were all out of shape and hairy. All the smart kids turned out great. I must admit, though, I was reluctant to go, but in the end, I'm glad I did. You know, I always thought of myself as not really popular, but not really a nerd either. Sort of an in-between. An in-betweener. <laughs> Is that even a word? <laughs> so what were you like in high school? Devin? Devin, are you there? Did you drop this call? Devin, hello? Chris Westfield, who is my uh, film partner, um, just moved to Phoenix, and so we decided that we would wanted to try to do a MOFA project long distance. So the first week of the three weeks of terror, he was on his honeymoon because he just got married. And then, so we started the second week and we, we Skyped, and um, which I had no idea I could do because I thought it had to do with the landline in any way. But we successfully Skyped and we brainstormed. And that was the more complicated part. I'm not saying the hardest part wasn't the filming because I was not there, but the more complicated part was the, um, the just getting the story down to a, uh, a lock to what we both agreed on would make a decent story for the genre that we, or the, the suggestion theme. And so we finally talked about what we, what we thought would work well and we, put it, we discussed an outline and he sent me something and then I worked on it and sent it back and then he tweaked it, sent it back to me, I tweaked it, sent it back to him and we agreed on the final script and then he just he filmed it and um, he needed he said this is what I need and I uh, composed the music and sent that back to him and there was a one point he said the opening does not work for me we need something else so I went and made him something else and he said that works better and um, I'm very proud of what we did I, I'm really impressed with it. That you don't have to be not only in the same room, but the same state to make something work. I mean, if you have a really good team and you are um, kind of in tune with each other, and everybody's on the same page, you can really do as well as you can if you're all in the same room with each other. It, it it's just seems like everybody's really, really worked hard at um, doing what they normally would have done if I had been in Phoenix or Chris had been here. So that, that was really impressive. I thought how, how easily that just came together like that. My advice would be to um, make sure that you have a team that is in tune with your own personal perceptions, that you really can all work together, that there's not too many cooks in this kitchen because um, that only causes problems um, that you you kind of all coincide with a similar vision don't have to, it doesn't have to be the same vision but it's really good if it's similar because that really takes out a lot of kinks and it takes out a lot of the issues of well I thought it would be better this way I thought it would be better this way you all kind of you know get together as a team it's got to be a team effort and talk about it and it's not about you it's not about person A or person B, it's for the project. You know, you have to do what's best for the project. You know, you want the best outcome. So my advice to filmmakers is get a team together that you know is going to work together. And that doesn't mean yes men or no men. That just means people that are going to uh, be cohesive in, in the specific project you're going to do because that really, really takes a lot of the load off.